The set list is the main event when it comes to uh, Loop Elements Pro 1.5. This is where we went all the way in. So uh, you guys, if you remember, like with the old version of Loop Elements 1.2 and below, like there was, uh, it was kind of wonky way to create a set list. You know, you had to hit the, the star uh, and then you had to put them all in a star and then it was like, okay, clearing them out. You had to go through like hundreds of loops just to like find the one you're looking for and favorite it. And then you had to like click the star and then it would bring up like the loops that you favorite it. And then you had to unfavorite those to add in new ones. It's a very convoluted process. I apologize for creating that convoluted process, but I also heard you guys in needing a proper set list function. So we went to the drawing board, literally and kind of sketch this out of like, what should this look like? What should this feel like? And it ultimately developed into what you see in front of you now. Uh, so not only did we give you a set list, we gave you a su supercharged set list, all right? So let's dig into it. So first of all, as you can see, you have a grid here. You can add up to 12 loops into this grid right here. And it's literally, what you see is what you get. You click the plus button, it pulls up the preset browser, you go in, let's just go into the new Smack City. Let's grab Bishop's backhand. Then you click the plus here. Boom. Bishop's backhand is now in the set list, right? Uh, if you should need to delete that out of the set list, you literally just click delete. But we're going to add it back in just because uh, that's song number one in my set list, right? I can easily click here and then we can go add Sunday morning as the second song, right? Uh, in my set list and then I can click a plus here and we'll go with Zion smack we'll put that one in there and let's just say we're, those are the three songs we're fast songs we're doing and then we're going to do something uh worshipy uh you know I'll just put perfect worship in there you know what I'm saying and then maybe we need a shout uh in there because hey why not it's church right so we'll go in and I'll add in this. Let's church bump, no kick. Uh, I want something in Smack City. I think we had something new in the Smack City one. Yeah, when we shout. Now we'll bring that in there. Boom. Turn on my preset BPM. So that way, now I can literally go through my set list. When that song ends, I click on the next joint. Now remember, I can hit the, the F button on my thing to fade out a loop, right? You can hit that in loop elements. You literally can hit the fade button to fade the loop out. That's still a thing. But you can stop it by hitting the space bar, right? Can literally go to the next loop. Loads instantly. No buffer. I can even load them in tandem. Without stopping. You know what I'm saying? So literally can load a loop up on the fly. I can load up my chat. Don't want to get stuck there. So that's kind of the flow of your set list. Now, one thing that's really, really cool is what we thought about with the set list is volume control, right? Because all of the loops are like the volumes are all over the place, right? And it's nothing worse than being in a loop set, being in a set, being at a church service, being in a whatever, going from one loop to the other and the volume is changed. And one, and we know we got these smack claps in here and the smack claps, they just loud, like they just gonna smack and you don't wanna like just be knocking folks out. So this gives you an opportunity. We added this little volume knob down here in order to give you guys the opportunity to be able to like gain stage those loops to make them all around the same volume. So I can say, bring that one right there and we'll save that. Then I can go to the next one, I can say, Need to bring that one about right there. And I can go to this one. Gain stage it. Say if that's the volume that works for my setup. 
about right there, right? So now, all of them are the same volume. Literally, like all of the same volume from loop to loop. I don't have to worry about like making on the fly adjustments. I can save those volumes into the set list. I can literally save those volumes into the set list. So that way I'm, when I'm going from loop to loop, um, I'm able to do that. Now, some other quality of life features here on the set list. Of course, you got your click. Now, the click is split by default, which means it goes to the left. You can easily make it go both sides. But I like the split feature, which puts it on the left side. Another cold, cool feature. Now, don't get confused by this. I want to make sure you guys don't get confused by this. When you see out here, out is for the entire loop. So maybe for whatever reason, you need to send your entire loop out a uh, three or four, five or six, depending on what interface you have hooked up. Clicking the out button allows you to send the entire loop out. Now, the click will always be either center or on the left side of whatever you send out. So if you send, if you're on one, two and you split the click, it's the click is going to be on one. It's going to be on your left side, right? It's going to be on channel one. But if you change your interface out to say, if you got three, four and you change it three, four, then the click is now going to be on three in the loop. You know, everything is going to be on that. So it just, all it does is just change the overall output. We're working on, multiple outputs again like we were talking about the ios thing earlier it's not like oh we just click a button and it just happens right no it's adding that feature could take us six months i'm just being honest with you like it's not something i'm very like cognizant of like these things take time and you have to build out software like you know like you're playing jenga because if you move the wrong block at the wrong place the whole thing falls apart and we don't want it to fall apart you know what I mean? And we don't want to paint ourselves into a corner either. All right. So we're working on that. I know you guys are going to ask about it. So I just thought I'd go ahead and address it. But you can, from the set list, decide what out that you want your entire loop to go out of. All right. So and then your save BPM here is the same thing as your preset BPM. That means you're able to um, whenever loop, when it, if this is turned off and I go to this loop, everything's going to stay at 80 BPM. Right. If I go to this. So in order to mitigate that, you have to turn on your BPM, your preset BPM. So now when I click it, you can see the BPM change to 102. Right. So if you ever get in the spot where you're using loop elements and you're like, why didn't the BPM change? And why isn't the BPM changing? It's this little button right here. This little light of mine. You got to click on this little light of mine and let it shine, because that's going to be the way that you're going to be able to uh, make sure that your BPM changes, but without it, it's useful because sometimes you need free BPM flowing. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just need to tap tempo something and, you know, get a loop up real quick. You know what I'm saying? So those are there. And then you have the save button, which saves all of these functions inside of your set lit right now, this button right here, we'll talk about that in a second, the generate button, because it's connected to, uh, this next part, which I think is the key point of this particular uh, update and that is the scenes right so i want you to kind of think of these like ableton scenes so if i'm in here i could jump from these different scenes you know what i'm saying now we talked about that generate button down here right if i now i can before i get to that i'm gonna show you what you can do with this because these are what we call mute groups all right and each scene has eight mute groups that controls every uh, particular mute, e every, the mute on each channel. So if I wanna mute channel one, I click that. You see that muted? If I'm gonna mute channel two, channel three, channel four, five, six, seven, eight. And I can even drag. So this allows you to create like different patterns, right? Different mute scenes. So I got the full loop here. And 
then maybe this one. Really, really cool for creating like your vibes. So that way, while you're performing live, while you're playing at church, while you're playing out in the gig, your loop does not have to be static. Static loops suck. Static loops suck. Sorry, it's 2025, about to be 2026. If you just got a static loop going, it's boring. Boring, boring static loops that just play for five minutes. What is exciting about that? So we're like, we gotta change this workflow and give you, you, give you the opportunity to create variations of your loop. Maybe on a verse. You know what I mean? Then bring it back here. Now you wanna know what's really fire about this? What's really, really fire? Let me show you guys. You're gonna love this. Bring my top down here. So I got this MIDI controller here that's connected. And if you notice, there are little notes here. C4, D4, E4, F4, so on and so forth, right? That's these notes right here on the keyboard. So when you connect a MIDI controller, I can jump from loop to loop using the C scale or from scene to scene, sorry, by using the C scale. So all you need is like a little MIDI controller in your setup and you can literally, while you're playing, hit that F and you got a Blake breakdown and you're able to play on that part. Then when you get to the vamp of the song, this is all on the fly. You know what I'm saying? You can control it all from your MIDI controller. Now what's really cool, we talked about this generate button right here earlier. This is cool because it lets me generate random patterns. Maybe I don't want to like take the time and create these. I can generate another one. I can easily just unlimited. It will just give me random patterns. And that's really, really cool because then I can save this pattern right into this loop, right? And then anytime I pull it up, let's say if I go here or whatever. Anytime I pull that up. So if I go back to this, pulls up my pattern, right? If I go here and we generate a random pattern here. You can also rename those scenes. I always want my first scene to be the full one. You know what I mean? Now I got random scenes here. And I can save that. You know what I mean? And if I ever need to clear it, I can just clear it, clear everything. And I can do the same thing with this. Now I got scenes for this.
easily. Then you could just hit save on that. And boom. So now just going back through these, I got these scenes. I got that scene. I got this set of scenes. And I can personalize these however I want. I can create these however I need. Even if I go to this one and you know, the, the generate button is just there to just generate some random patterns. And so I don't have to do the work if I don't want to, if I just like what the computer gave me, praise the Lord. But if not, I can literally just kind of create my own. Maybe I just want that. And then on this scene, maybe I just, I just want that, right? So now I just got these three scenes. And then maybe we go to a verse and I just, then maybe we got a down bridge or something. Then we come back. You know what I mean? So I can create this however I want, save it however I want, and I can say that's my setup for that particular loop. You know what I mean? So now I got scenes for this, scenes for that, scenes for this. And then like I said, I can name this whatever I want. Maybe I want to name this Sunday morn. You know, Sunday morning. Uh, just put that in there and boom, I got Sunday morning, got my playlist set up, got everything queued up, got my scenes set up, got my volume routed. You know what I mean? Everything's lined up and ready to go for that particular set uh, all lined up right there. What have you now, if I ever want to like delete something out of the set list, it's literally I could click delete. I can click on here and then I can hit you know, delete slot, or I can click right here and clear everything out of there. Click of a button, you know, and then I can start adding in, you know, other loops or what have you, you know what I'm saying? Bringing those in or what have you. So it's just that simple to, um, build out a set list. And this is one of the key, key, key parts or what have you of key updates to loop elements pro. So I hope that kind of gives you guys a good, good look at, you know what I'm saying? What, um, what's new in loop elements. That's the big major feature 